Dampness in Buildings and Diagnosis, Module 5 Salts in Building Materials Efflorescent Salts Efflorescent salts form on surfaces, including beneath wallpaper, paint films and plaster. The latter they can literally blow off as they form. They form as a white, amorphous powder or a crystalline solid. Whether they form as a powder or a solid depends on the surrounding humidity. Most of the sulphates, usually sodium sulphate, but as we'll see later, one can get magnesium sulphate in certain roof tiles. And sulphates are common in many older building materials. The important thing is they lose water to the air as they form on surfaces. They lose water. And where visible, they indicate the passage of water through the material. It's very important to note that salts can only move in solution, not as a solid. Crystalline deposit of efflorescent salts on new plaster is a good example of it there. And just one point about efflorescent salts. They alone, in the absence of moisture and any other form of contamination, will not cause an electrical moisture meter to respond significantly. Here they are forming on the surface of a render and they are literally cracking and blowing off the plaster finish. The other group of salts in building materials are hygroscopic salts. Hygroscopic salts absorb water from the air, but they are rarely visible as deposits on surfaces. However, their effects are in the form of visible dampness and high surface moisture meter readings. And indeed, where they result in visible dampness, this is frequently referred to as salt damp. Do not confuse efflorescence with hygroscopic. We've seen reports whereby the investigators stated that hygroscopic salts were visible all over the surface. No, they weren't. They were efflorescent. Uptake of moisture from air by hygroscopic and deliquescent salts. The absorption of moisture depends on several factors. Number one, the humidity. The greater the humidity, the more water that's taken up from the atmosphere. It also depends on the particular salt. Some hygroscopic salts are more hygroscopic, for want of another word, than others. And, of course, the amount present. The more, the merrier, basically. Low levels of hygroscopic salts don't usually cause visible dampness, but they will still record high electrical moisture meter readings. So this is very roughly a diagrammatic form of the relationship between the air dry moisture content, i.e. the hygroscopic moisture content of a material, and the humidity and level of contamination. Low levels of contamination, as we increase the humidity, very little happens. It'll go up slightly, as indeed it does in a, in a clean material, but it goes up a little bit more. However, look what happens when we get heavy contamination. In a low humidity, it's probably not noticeable. There is more absorption of water from the air, but when the humidity is high with heavy levels, we get a massive increase <coughs> in water absorbed from the atmosphere. The highest I've come across is 24%. All that moisture was hygroscopic. So the absorption is related directly to humidity. Where we get dampness caused by hygroscopicity, we refer to it commonly as salt damp. And this appears to come and go depending on humidity. Often appears on rainy days, then dries out. Also common around chimneys. Salt damp can come and go pretty rapidly often within a few minutes from being visibly dry to visibly damp. If we look at water ingress, however, this usually results in some degree of efflorescence and eruption of finishes, not just simple visible damp. Some examples of salt damp 
on the left the old plaster was left on and this was a job basically that looked pretty clean but one day it just appeared like that as the humidity went up so did that and that appeared in a matter of a few minutes the other session on the right salt damp that's where dampness is solely due to hygroscopic nature of the salts we saw that one in an earlier module caused by hygroscopic salts being derived from a chimney flue the other feature of them is if the hygroscopic salts get into a hygroscopic material such as a wallpaper or cardboard then the effect of dampness seems to be exaggerated salt damp salt damp on a bedroom chimney area first floor and salt damp on a lounge wall salt damp funny enough seems to look different salt damp just looks different there is an extreme of hygroscopic known as deliquescence or deliquescent if we take a material that's hygroscopic or rather hygroscopic salt increase it in humidity around it it will become deliquescent that means to say it can absorb so much water from the hygroscopic state that it will actually start to dissolve in itself and different salts become deliquescent at different humidities for example let's take common salt sodium chloride a 75% RH it's hygroscopic it goes a bit sticky because it's absorbing water but increase the relative to humidity to 85% and leave it you will find it starts to become liquid it's absorbing so much water that it's starting to dissolve in itself once deliquescent it is a liquid and it can therefore become mobile in and through contaminated permeable materials so a liquid form can move this is a good example taken by a friend of mine with reference to hygroscopic salts he's got two two humidifiers the picture on the left shows two humidifiers there's not much to be seen but after five minutes you can see where the old chimney was it's showing distinctly visible damp due to salt damp it's become visible due to the higher humidity as more water being absorbed effects of hygroscopic salt contamination the differences note are solely due to the moisture being taken out of the air and they're the same material uncontaminated and contaminated and already I think it becomes evident possibly that um, contaminated already hygroscopic materials such as wallpaper can absorb a hell of a lot of water but I will add the levels of salts in those papers and the other samples were not uh, distinctly measured however it does illustrate these differences in moisture content solely due to the hygroscopic salt contamination basically the more contamination the merrier the greater the salt content uh, moisture concentration look at the higher ones like the lime plaster and the cement render I mean they would be visibly damp a brick, red brick at the bottom the seven point odd percent would make it look a bit red it would look distinctly red now I mentioned earlier the level of moisture absorbed in a contaminated material will depend on the humidity the salt itself and the amount present quick look at the salts themselves chloride and nitrate from rising damp the amount deposited in masonry depends on several factors one the levels of salts within the groundwater um, that's just an example from some groundwater around Buckingham 20 parts per million of chloride and 50 parts per million of nitrate the rate of rise of the rising damp and the rate of evaporation the duration of the rising damp and now if we're looking at properties without a damp proof course we are looking at a long time over a hundred years tap water may also contain chloride and nitrate and it also comes from the ground however it's highly unlikely that a mains water will leak will be of sufficiently long duration to allow a significant build-up of those salts 
and levels in tap water are therefore usually minimal. You can obtain the composition of your local tap water um, from the local water board. Likely origin of contamination. Origin, rising damp, chloride and nitrate. Seawater, chloride. I don't think there's much nitrate, by the way, in seawater. Chimney flues, chloride and nitrate. Usually a high chloride to nitrate ratio. And we also get ammonium salts. Urine, loads of chloride. And old screeds, magnesite, chloride in those. Magnesite, magnesium oxychloride, floor screed on a slab. There's a sample that was removed. Those materials, magnesite, are usually coloured. Uh, they're sort of off reddish. Those materials will always record high moisture meter readings, even when regarded as dry. But if it gets damp, it'll break down and release magnesium chloride, which is deliquescent. Sulfates. Many sulfates are efflorescent, sodium and magnesium sulfates. Present naturally in many building materials at some level, especially older buildings. Present in groundwater, some areas this is high. They're also part of a rising damp problem or complex and they're not hygroscopic usually. Uh, there are maps around which show you areas of high sulfate content. Magnesium sulfate is present in some roofing tiles. Magnesium sulfate being Epsom salts. Gypsum plasters are largely calcium sulfate. And they can cause sulfate attack in newly applied cement renders and plasters. So, have a look at sulfate attack of cement. Cement is incredibly complex and the chemistry cement is also incredibly complex. So let's just simplify it for our purpose. Let's look at the left. The CAAL is calcium aluminate. We call that cement for ease of use. Plus sulfate in the presence of water when it's highly alkaline forms the material on the right ettringite calcium aluminosulfate. Note the 32 molecules of water tagged on the end. The formation of calcium aluminosulfate causes an expansion of cement of over 200%. The cement expands, loses all strength and will disintegrate. And <coughs> if you take a piece of severely sulfate attacked, say, render, drop it in a glass of water and leave it overnight, if it's that bad, it simply just disintegrates and collapses into uh, a muddy pile. Note, sulfate from heavily contaminated sulfate substrates may diffuse into new cement render to cause sulfate attack. Two, common origin for sulfate attack is the addition of gypsum plasters to cement based materials. The reason to get a faster set. And there's such an example. It was replastered, rendered. The guy, the plasterer, had added gypsum to the sand cement mix and it simply expanded and blistered. Finally, ammonium salts. These are usually associated with long-term burning of fossil fuels and they're frequently found in conjunction with staining from soluble tar compounds. So if we take a sample, shake it up, you get this sort of tobacco coloured uh, water extract. And of course, ammonium salts are hygroscopic. Dampness in buildings and diagnosis. End of module 5.